So carpentry is full of obscure words, some of which date back hundreds or even thousands of years in origin. It's one of the reasons I love being a carpenter. It has a secret language to it. Words like mutton, pilaster, astragal, or purlin, chamfer, and rabbit. They're fun to say, and they make you sound really knowledgeable when you're talking to non-carpenters. Most of these words have very specific uses that don't come up every day. But there's one word, one very old word, that is so integral to every aspect of carpentry and woodworking, I've come to believe it's the most important word in our trade. Understanding this word and the concept behind it immediately sets you apart from novices. It affects the outcome and quality of every project, and ultimately it decides whether you work safely or risk harm to your body and your tools. The most important word in carpentry is this one. Kerf. If you don't know what it means, you need to know. And if you do know what it means, stick around. You might learn a little more about it. That's coming up now on The Honest Carpenter Show. The word kerf existed in Middle English a thousand years ago, exactly as you see it today. But the origins of the word go back 6,000 years to a Proto-Indo-European root. Think about it. This word predates the metal bronze. That's a long journey from the Neolithic period to now. And it indicates just how fundamental this word is that it can exist virtually unchanged for so long. In the last couple hundred years, the word kerf has taken on a more refined definition. It means the groove or notch created when a saw cuts through something. Or it sometimes also refers to the width of a saw blade at the teeth. If there is one thing rookie carpenters and DIYers fail to understand, it's the concept of kerf. They'll screw up project after project, risk their fingers and their tools, all because they're failing to grasp this one idea. So let's break down how kerf works. In the end, it all comes down to one really simple concept. When you cut something with a saw, you are permanently removing a portion of that thing forever. Most inexperienced people think that when you cut a board, you split it evenly into two pieces, but you don't. You create two individual pieces that, if added together, will equal less than what they started as. Part of that board is gone permanently. And where does it go? Sawdust. You'll never get that portion of your board back because it has been blasted into a million little pieces. Some of them are big enough that you can see them. Others are so small that even your vacuum filter can't pick them up. This happens because a saw blade has a certain thickness to it. In order for a saw blade to pass through a piece of material, it has to clear a path wide enough for itself to travel through. It does this by using individual saw teeth to knock out tiny chunks of wood bit by bit until it eventually clears a groove. All success and failure in carpentry centers around this groove, and we call this groove the kerf. But why is the kerf so important? We'll boil it down to three main reasons, but remember that the third reason is by far the most important. So no matter what you do, do not skip that one. But we need to build up to it, so let's start at the beginning. Reason number one, measurement accuracy. Here's the classic mistake that beginners make. They're looking at some plans that say that they need to cut a one by four board to 32 inches in length. So they pull a tape measure on their piece of wood, make a mark at 32, then they bring their saw up, center their blade on that mark, and start cutting. Before they've even gotten started, they've already screwed up. Why? Because the saw blade itself has a certain thickness. If the center of the saw blade is on that mark, then it means half of the saw blade width is on the wrong side of the mark. Your 32 inch board is gonna come up a little bit short and in carpentry and woodworking, that small difference is gonna come back to haunt you. So a better way to visualize it is like this. Most power saw blades these days have carbide teeth that are an eighth of an inch wide. Let's plot that out in pencil lines. Here, our lines are one eighth apart perfectly representing our blade path. If we truly want our board to be 32 inches long, that cut path needs to sit on the far side of the cut mark. This way we're always hugging right up against the 32 inch boundary, but not crossing it. So as I said, if you center your blade on the cut mark, half the blade is cutting wood that you want to leave. To prevent themselves from making a mistake, carpenters will often mark the waist side of their piece with little X's. Those X's say, keep your blade on this side of the line. With that in mind, you're safe to line up the point or tip of your blade tooth with the line make your cut, and know that you're leaving your full measurement. And this applies no matter what kind of saw or blade you're using. Jigsaw blades are much thinner than circular saw blades, but they still have a width to them. So when you're cutting with them, you want to stay on the proper side of your cut line and not mess up your dimensions. That's how kerf is indelibly tied to measurement accuracy. You need to always consider the kerf thickness of the blade and where the cut path lies. But kerf also determines how your finished product comes out looking, which brings us to the second reason why I think this is the most important word in carpentry. Cut quality. Cutting wood is a highly destructive process. The cut path of a blade is a site of contained chaos where metal meets organic grain with tremendous amounts of speed and force. The process almost has less to do with cutting and more to do with smashing because on a small enough level, that's exactly what's happening. 
It's as though each blade tooth is headbutting its way through the material that you're cutting. If that sounds ridiculous, it's actually pretty accurate. The face of each saw tooth hits the material head on, removing one little chunk at a time. This happens so fast and so frequently that it looks like the kerf is magically appearing. But it's not. Wood grain is being torn out by force, and this force can leave the edges of the cut ragged and ugly. Not acceptable, especially in woodworking. What you want is a clean, tight kerf with very little chipping or tearing. So, how do you get it? The absolute most important thing is to keep a very sharp saw blade. In order for the blade to make a clean kerf, the teeth need to be very sharp and well defined. If the teeth are dull, they're going to create more friction, which will bog and slow down the motor. The saw teeth will drag, and they'll have to tear material out any way that they can. Sharper teeth create less friction. This means that the motor can run fluidly at max cutting speed, and the kerf will be sharper and tighter. But sometimes even this isn't enough to ensure a clean kerf, so woodworkers use a variety of techniques to help out. In some instances, they'll tape both the top and bottom surfaces of the material. This prevents the grain from blowing out with the passage of the blade. I did this in my How to Cut Down Doors video, so you can get a better look at it there if you like. Woodworkers also use backing blocks, especially on the miter saw. Backing blocks are a sacrificial piece of wood behind the piece you're cutting. When the saw teeth finally exit the back of a wood piece, finishing off the kerf, they tend to blow through it violently. The little bit of wood at the back has nothing to counteract that action. So a backing block provides support to protect your piece as you finish creating the kerf. Woodworkers will also score cut lines with a sharp knife beforehand. By severing this top material before cutting, right at the cut line, it's less inclined to get blown out during the cutting process. There are even some really high-end shop table saws that now actually do this for you. They have two blades, the one that does most of the cutting, and a smaller blade in front of that one that scores a sharp line for the main blade to follow. I've never even used one of these saws before, but they're a really good example of how important kerf control is to woodworkers. I mean, just look at the price tag on that Grizzly. You can see how kerf affects cut quality on every single cut. But the third and main reason why kerf is the most important word in carpentry and woodworking has to do with one thing, safety. Virtually everything that can go wrong while you're cutting with a saw has to do with the kerf. When a blade is in the process of cutting, it's essentially encased in the piece of wood. It's clearing its own path, and if that path is stable, the blade will pass through without a problem. Where things will go wrong though is when the kerf closes in around the blade. This situation is called binding, and it's something that carpenters worry about on every single cut. Binding mainly occurs for three reasons. One is because the wood has grain warpages that might cause it to bend and close around the blade. Two is that the piece of wood, or the saw itself, can get twisted or turned while cutting, also causing binding. Three is that the wood stock is not well supported, and as the wood bows and collapses at the cut line, it begins to squeeze the blade while it's spinning. When these things occur, bad stuff inevitably happens, and it happens very quickly. When table saws bind, they tend to throw wood towards the operator. When miter saws bind, they kick up violently, often blasting wood to pieces. And when circular saws bind, they jump up and backwards, launching themselves out of the cut and back towards the operator. All this happens because the motor doesn't have the strength to keep pushing the blade forward, so instead it throws the stock, or the saw, backwards. This is very scary, especially for rookies. The kerf needs to remain stable. That path that the kerf is creating, the kerf groove, is like a protective bubble around the blade. It lets the blade spin freely without pressure. When that bubble shrinks and the kerf closes, friction on the blade increases rapidly and everything goes haywire. I'll do multiple videos on power saw safety later because they're complex topics and they deserve a lot of attention. But for now, take my word for it. This is how fingers get lost, how puncture wounds occur from flying objects, and how tools and materials get destroyed. These days, tools have more safety features to prevent these things than they ever had before. Table saws have riving knives to keep wood from squeezing the blade. Circular saws and miter saws have springback guards in case the saw jumps. And our blades have even changed. Nearly all circular blades now have carbide teeth, which are wider than the blade itself. This means that they create a wider kerf, thereby lowering the chance of binding. Carbide teeth make cleaner cuts with less kerf tear out, and they stay sharp for a longer period of time. This was a brilliant innovation which instantly made power tools safer. So that's it, three main reasons why I think kerf is the most important word in carpentry and woodworking. If you understand it, you'll be safer, work more efficiently, and get better finished results on all your projects. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Do you think there's a more important word in carpentry and woodworking? It's a philosophical exercise, but I know I'm right, so you can try to convince me otherwise down in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell beside the subscribe button so you get notifications when we post more videos. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.